Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays from snowy central Illinois, where this afternoon, for the first time in 17 years, the Illinois State Redbirds take on the DePaul Blue Demons. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Illinois State Basketball on Comcast Sportsnet Chicago. Alongside former Redbird assistant Bob Morris, I'm Kurt Pegler. 1996, the last time these two teams played one another. Hard to believe. Yes, it is, and it's a shame. And I'm glad to see this is a rivalry that's been restored. A lot of ties and connections between these programs. It's one that should never have been dismissed that long. Glad they're back at it. One of the ties, Billy Garrett, a freshman starter for DePaul, has an interesting lock into Illinois State. His dad, Billy Sr., was a wide receiver that caught many touchdowns running up and down the field for Illinois State Redbird football team. And his son will run up and down the court at Redbird Arena today trying to score some points against the Redbirds and his daddy's alma mater. One of the guys that will guard him, Bobby Hunter, off to a good start for the Birds. Bobby Hunter has been a real real solid player for the Redbirds. He's helped them in the scoring department, the ball handling department, and his leadership abilities. That's helped the Redbirds win five out of their last six ball games, Kurt. Post players John Jones and Reggie Lynch have their work cut out for them against a deep, talented, and tall front line of the Blue Demons. Stay tuned. It's Illinois State and DePaul up next on Comcast Sportsnet. Let's take a look at today's starting lineup brought to you by your local sports stores. Cleveland Melvin, the DePaul Blue Demon senior, leads the team in scoring, rebounding, three-point shooting, just about everything. Danny Mar Schuch is a uh, transfer from Purdue. He's also a big factor, at least on the front line. Tommy Hamilton, Billy Garrett, and Brandon Young, outstanding point guard from Baltimore for Oliver Purnell's Blue Demons. For the Redbirds, it's six and five. Harris Lee, a true freshman, has been awfully good for the Redbirds in his first couple of months on campus. Deshaun Knight, the transfer, is the leading scorer for Illinois State at 14 and a half points per game. Bobby Hunter, we mentioned him in the open. 18 steals this year, made a real impact defensively for Illinois State. Nick Zeisloff is playing a power forward position, even though all of his life he's been a shooting guard. He's kind of morphed into that position for the Illinois State Redbirds. And John Jones in the pivot. Illinois State will be tested on the front line against, as we mentioned, a deep Blue Demons squad. Starting line lineups again brought to you by your local Ford stores. Visit localfordstores.com to check out Ford's full line of vehicles that are leading by example. Ford, go further. Dan Muller in the second season with the Redbirds, the former star player for Illinois State. 24 wins, 20 losses. A 12-year assistant under his college coach, Kevin Stallings, at Vanderbilt. And the Redbirds have been on a bit of a roll, Bob. As we mentioned, they've won three in a row at home in five of their last six. Well, you got two teams that are kind of on a roll right now. The Blue Demons have won their last three ball games. They're looking to keep a roll going, too. And as you just stated, the Redbirds kind of like where they're at right now. They can just continue the trend. We're going to find out here in about five seconds. Mike Stewart, Mark Whitehead, Brent Hamilton, the officials working this afternoon's game here at Redbird Arena. DePaul wins the tip. The Redbirds in their home whites with red letters and red trim. DePaul with their dark blue uniforms with their uh, blue and white trim along the sides. Again, the first matchup between these two schools since 1996. The Redbirds won that game in St. Louis. The first time that DePaul has played at Redbird Arena since 1992. Blue Demons lead the all-time series 21 to 3. Hamilton in the low post, and he may have stepped on the baseline. And that he did. He, he chose to go the baseline on the spin move on the entry pass leading in that direction, and it took him right out of bounds on his second dribble. See what, see what the Redbirds do in their first possession. It's Hunter off a curl. Now it's going to be Deshaun Knight. Those are the kind of shots that I anticipate the Redbirds being able to get all day today. And if they can knock those down early and build some momentum from it, I think the Birds have a great chance to overcompensate for their lack of size with their shooting abilities if they can get something going early. This zone that you're seeing the Redbirds implement here is something they've been using all season, and they're packing it in ex extremely tight today. They're not getting very many people outside the lane. There's usually four in the lane and one on the shooter. Hunter left open from the corner and rattled in and out. Jones with the offensive board for Illinois State. Didn't have much of a shot. It's Zeisloff who comes away with it. Now Knight. Zeisloff tees up a three, and that's missed. Both teams cold shooting to start 
this game. Let's talk about the keys to the game, Bob. What do you think they are? Well, I think the Redbirds are going to have to keep DePaul from getting some putbacks. They can't let them have second chance points, so they're going to have to crash the boards. And how you can do that is one something I talked about already with their 2 3 zone. They got to pack it in. They got to get four people that focus on going to the boards at all on every defensive possession. The other thing they got to do, challenge the demon the Blue Demons on their perimeter outside shooting today. Blue Demons turn the basketball over again. Well, certainly DePaul has a much bigger front line. The Redbirds have really been uh, hurt there. Michael Middlebrooks was declared academically ineligible, so he is out for the rest of the season, and he's a six foot nine, 210 pound post player, so he's not at Dan Muller's arsenal the rest of the year. So it's John Jones, Reggie Lynch are gonna get their work cut out for them today. Great ball movement right there in that possession. Just didn't get rewarded. They got, they've had great looks. The Redbirds have on all three possessions. They've been wide open and they've got a chance to knock down some shots that just haven't fallen for them. Again, a great take. Deshaun Knight couldn't finish and the ball's out of bounds to DePaul. So we played two and a half minutes, still looking for our first points of the game. The birds can't get frustrated because what they're doing is working. The ball just isn't going in right now. So when, it, when they get that ball to drop, and it will eventually, when they get that ball to drop, things will change. A little three-quarter court, 2-2-1. Two, two, oh, John Wooden, UCLA, 2-2-1 two, two, full court pressure. Made that famous back in the 60s, 70s. Hamilton from in close, can't get it to go. The Redbirds come away with it again. Hunter in the front court, all the way down, scooped it in. Now, if the Redbirds can get out and go like that, they can limit the Blue Demons to one shot, kick it out, get it going, and get in transition. I think the Redbirds could beat, beat the Blue Demons up and down the floor today. But the whole key to that is defensive rebounding. Here's Young's fadeaway, that's in. Brandon Young at 15 points and four rebounds a game. Again, the senior from Baltimore. He's the first, the first DePaul player with three straight 100 assist seasons in his career since Rod Strickland in the middle 80s. That's a name from the past. Boy, that is, and that's a great name out of the past. Basketball archives of Chicago Blue Demon. There's Knight for three. Really got himself set well. Got, got his shoulders and hips squared to the bucket on that one, and no doubt it was going in. Good ball movement by the Blue Demons. Find a wide open man. Bingo. And that's Billy Garrett Jr. We mentioned him. He won a state championship at Morgan Park in high school a year ago. Has put himself into the Blue Demons starting five in his first points of the game. He and Paris Lee for the ISU Redbirds played together on the Mac Irvin Fire AAU squad. Jones in traffic. He gets fouled and he's going to get to the free throw line. Good entry pass that time by Bobby Hunter to get the ball to Jones. We'll step aside. Time out of the floor. Illinois State and DePaul are tied at five. They are rocking out here at Redbird Arena. That's the band Rushville. It has a local tie in that Brett Gillen, a former Illinois State basketball player, is one of the lead singers of the band, and they are providing the entertainment here at Redbird Arena during timeouts. Also did a killer job with the national anthem. Brett Gillen is a former Normal Community High School basketball star and again played here in the 90s at Illinois State. John Jones will be at the free throw line for the first free throws of the afternoon. Curtis know it's very early, but at this point in time, the Redbirds have two points in the paint to the DePaul zero. And I still say, you, you got to keep an eye on something like that because that is such a key in today's game, I believe, what the Blue Demons can accomplish in the paint and what the, what the Redbirds can prevent them from doing. you got to keep them from getting touches in the paint or they kill, kill the birds. No question about it. The Illinois State coaching staff concerned about the front line of the Blue Demons when you take a look at Hamilton at 6'10", Cleveland Melvin at 6'8". And of course, Marchuch at six foot ten. They're just a real big physical front line, and Dan Muller knows that his his front line is going to be tested. Good spacing by the Blue Demons. Did a good job of pushing the ball up the sideline and finding the man in the middle. And Jones comes away with the block. McKinney's checked in the game for the first time for the Blue Demons. And we're seeing Zach Lofton now in the game for Illinois State. That's him bringing the ball up. 
Good recovery and a help side there by Jones to cut off and take away the baseline drive. Lee threw a little seam in the defense. DePaul loves to play man-to-man. -man. That's what Coach Purnell hangs his hat on, that his teams are strong enough physically and mentally to do it throughout the game. This is McKinney in the front court now. He and Zeisloff of Illinois State were AAU teammates. As we said in the onset, a lot of ties between these two programs throughout the years. It's just a shame that there's been such a such a long time since they've played. Good to see him back at it. Baseline jumper is missed. It was an air ball that time, and now back in the front court after a steal. Ball's got a, DePaul's got a chance to cash in, but Brandon Young missed a three badly, and it's out of bounds. It's going to go to the Redbirds. That's just flat ugly. Cleveland Melvin had the ball in point-blank range and kicked it out to, to Young for the three, and he missed it badly. Oh. State. Neither team very comfortable, it seems, on offense right now. A lot of lot of good looks, but not good results at this point in time. The ball, ball movement on both ends has been very good. Just the shooting has not been. First team that can grab a hold of a shooting touch can take control of this game. Good tap out right there by Kaysa Keen to keep the ball alive for the Redbirds. Yeah, smallest guy on the floor does that. Here's Lofton down the paint. Scooped it up oh, and in. Oh, beauty, beauty. Good control drive that time, and he was able to finish because he got his body turned into the shot. Instead of shooting back across his body, he got his shoulders turned into the rim. It was a great finish. Good take by Zach Lofton. First points for the sophomore from St. Paul, Minnesota. Young is fouled before he can shoot it. Here's that Lofton move again. Now watch how he gets turned in, right there. When he leaves the floor, he hadn't quite accomplished that, but as he finished the shot, you saw there that his shoulders were square to the rim, and when you get squared, the chances of the shot going in are 100% better than when you're not. 9-4, the Illinois State advantage. We've played just over six minutes here at Redbird Arena. Redbirds have been exclusively staying in that 2-3 zone, and like I said, there's just about all of four guys in the paint area. They're not coming out. They're challenging the Blue Demon's outside shooting abilities. McKinney, the miss on the three. Reggie Lynch has made his appearance. It was questionable whether or not he was going to get into the game today because of an ankle injury. Hunter, the miss on the three. Both teams really struggling from the field right now. When that's happening, you got to get creative. you got to find ways to score. How do you do it? You take it to the bucket. You get offensive rebounds that's right Young. there. Yeah, Brandon Young with a nice floater. Brandon Young decided, okay, we haven't done well shooting outside. I'm going to go inside, and he did it off the penetration. Second field goal of the game for Young. Good decision by Keene not to force things right there. He got inside, but there wasn't a lane. Lofton blocked that time. He tried the same move that he scored on a moment ago, but the Blue Demons were waiting for him this time. We see it off of DePaul there on the on the slap. And the, and here's the last shot by the Demons. Goes down, kind of uses a brush screen. Bingo, finishes with a left hand. Brandon Young, very good player. He's had double-figure scoring efforts in all but one game this season. Got a whistle again before the shot. Anticipated Lofton to come off the screen being set by Reggie Lynch. He juked and went back the other direction, and they drew the foul. Not only is DePaula a tall team, which we've talked about, they're strong, muscular team. Reggie Lynch kind of flipped that one in and it found the bottom of the net. I think he lost it on the way up. You know, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, Kurt. Lynch left Thursday's Illinois State victory with an ankle injury. He was uncertain of whether he'd play today. There's Mark Chuch off the nice feed from Young. Lynch slow to react right there. I don't know if it was the ankle or just misplayed, but he, he got schooled on that one. Birds better be strong when they penetrate into that middle today because there's some physical 
physical ball players on that Blue Demon team. And I don't mean that in the negative. I mean, that's a good basketball team. Kind of thought about the three, but instead kicks out. Now it's Keene's turn for three. That's missed. DePaul is four of 11 from the field. Illinois State is four of 13 to start well, this one. They're not going to have to replace the Nets at halftime. <laughs> We've got another whistle, and we've got a timeout on the floor. Illinois State has a two-point lead over the Blue Demons of DePaul, 11-9. Reggie Lynch has the Redbirds in front. Illinois State, 11, and DePaul, 9, just underway here at Redbird Arena. Again, like you said, Bob, when you're not shooting the ball very well, you got to find other ways to score, and both teams are going to be challenged with that right now. Well, at this point in time, neither team's blistering the nets by any means, so they've got to get creative. They've got to do something to get the ball in the basket and, and challenging, uh, you know, the defense to stop you on, on penetration, getting the, you know, getting the, the uh, penetration and the kick out, you know, you gotta, you got to find something to get to the free throw line. you got to do it. you just got to do it. Play ball. That's all, they, all you can do. Mark shoots over the back right of there. Willis that time, so it's going to be a foul against the big fella. That's how, for you young viewers out there, if you're guarding someone taller than you, don't give up because they're tough. You just saw Tony Willis right there with a great block out and draw the foul. That's how you contribute in that manner. You, you, you can always find ways to contribute. Block out is a lost start in basketball. Everybody wants to do, rely on their jumping abilities, folks. Behind the screen from Jones, tries to attack from the right, flipped it up and in. Well, that was getting creative because I don't know how he hung in the air long enough to get that shot off, but he did. Well done. Redbirds are staying true to the to, to their defense with the 2-3 packed in, and it's really creating nightmares for the Blue Demons. McKinney's pass is picked off, so another turnover for the Blue Demons. That's their third here in the opening nine minutes. The Paul's trying very hard to go inside with the ball, but it's packed in by so many Redbirds, it's hard to find a lane. Willis for three is missed. Back in transmi transition comes to Paul. It's Young trailing the play. Here's Mark Chuch again, banged into, and it's going to be an offensive foul. He and John Jones collided. That's the second foul now. Mark Chuch has picked up in the last three trips down the floor. you got to know who your trailer is and where they are at on the floor, and they gave it to a to a 6'10 post player running hard down the middle of the lane, and he didn't know what to do with it, so he lowered his shoulder like a fullback. We'll see it coming down here on the replay. The kick out to Marchucci. He puts his shoulders down, and that's going to be a foul every time. And so Marchucci goes to the bench now after picking up that foul. Hamilton back in now. Zizloff lost the dribble. Gives it up to Hunter as we approach the 10-minute mark halfway through this opening half. Perimeter defense is good for Blue Demons. Very, very good. They extend it well. They get down the passing lane, and they do things like this. And when they need help then because it's trouble, you're having trouble getting into your offense, you pull a post out to set a screen, and if you're not solid on your screen, you get a moving screen violation, which John Jones just had happen again. And Jamal Samuel will check in now and send Jones, who picked up that foul, to the Illinois State bench. Samuel's minutes in the last couple of games have increased. Jones had to. Since Middlebrooks has been declared academically ineligible for the second semester, Samuels has become the next post player in. Particularly then, when Reggie Lynch got injured the other night, you're going to have to use him more and more. There's Young, and now he's picked up the scoring slap. Cleveland oh. Melvin really not touching the basketball much. It's been Young doing the damage. Young is a senior. He knows what has to happen. And now Illinois State turns it over. It's off Samuels' hands, and now the Blue Demons come back with a chance for the lead. Samuels was trying to do something that he's not capable of. Just catch and reverse it when you're out there on the perimeter. Garrett the miss, long rebound tipped oh. out. It's controlled by Young. And an easy pass down low. We're going to have an offensive goaltending or defensive goaltending. Dewan Marrero is going to be, be credited with the basket. And it's the first Blue Demon lead of the game. Well, the, the Redbird defense initially did its job. It got the missed shot, the long kick, the long rebound, though, that didn't secure, and when that doesn't happen, you saw the scramble ensue, and that's when you find somebody wide open like that. Lee 
gives it up now to Zeisloff. Didn't get his feet set that time. Offensive rebound Lofton, and he's going to get to the free throw line, and that foul's going to go against Hamilton. Right there is, is a way that I talked about earlier about trying to find ways that you can contribute on the offensive end when the shot isn't dropping. Go crash the offensive board. Zach Lofton did it right there. He got great position. He knew when Zizloff got the ball that he was a shooter and he was going to take that shot, so he immediately established himself on the offside position, drew the drew the foul on the putback attempt. Forrest Robinson, Jr. from Ranger, Texas, is checking in now for DePaul for the first time. Another large individual. Yeah, six foot ten. He missed the first four games with an ankle injury, but has returned now to the floor. For Oliver Purnell in his fourth year with the Blue Demons. So Lofton splits the free throws, and we're even at 14. Right there's the vulnerable position against that press. Right in the middle, they got it and attacked. Well, McDonald took it right to the rim and scored. Here comes the Birds quickly right back. Lofton's pull up is missed. What you got to look for on, on days that, that the offense is struggling is you got to find players who come off your bench and give you that lift until your starters get to get in the groove. And, and he has done that. McDonald's been there for the Blue Demons. And Samuel checks back out. John Jones checks back in. I think with Reggie Lynch, it was a test trial when they put him out there for those two to three minutes a little bit ago to see how he could react to the scenario. He, had, he hadn't practiced in, well, since their previous game. He hadn't been on the floor. Zeisloff gets the loose ball and hits the little jumper. Boy, that was pretty. That was pretty. you got to practice that shot. It doesn't just happen because that requires a lot of touch. McDonald, does he still have the hot hand? He still does. Boy, feed the beast when they get hot. Boy, where would they be without him at this point? They'd be struggling, and he has really been a pick-me-up. Three straight field goals for the sophomore from Las Vegas. I got a whistle against the Blue Demons. The birds are capable of moving the ball quickly like that. They'll draw fouls and eventually get the Blue Demons in foul trouble. The Blue Demons getting a lift from Jarrell McDonald have a 21-16 lead over Illinois State here at Redbird Arena. 21-16 DePaul leads Illinois State here at Redbird Arena. 7.45 mark left in the opening half. Redbird's trying to jam on a little bit like the, the pep band is doing here. Huh? Well, they need to... They need to find a spark somewhere because right now they're not shooting the ball very well. The Redbirds are 6 and 19 for 31 percent. The Blue Demons of DePaul are 9 of 18 for 50 percent. And probably more impressive, the 3 of 7 from the three-point line at 42, almost 43 percent. The size left of the free throw line for the Redbirds. mentioned that he's had to change positions. He's really a shooting guard. He's been a shooting guard pretty much all of his life, but with the Redbirds having some issues in the post, he's slid into that power forward position, which is really not his, his bread and butter, but he's, he's done a nice job there. Well, he has definitely contributed. There's no question about that. He's, he, he makes a tough matchup on the, on the, when the Redbirds are on offense. It makes a tough matchup for the defense. Redbirds playing a lot with three and four guard offenses, and so Sizeloff has been in that role. They, and, and to overcompensate for a lack of height, it just takes super hustle and effort for the Redbirds. And, and they, you know, when they play with that, good things happen. When they don't, just the opposite. Morero the miss with the ball. Now Knight tries to attack, and he flipped it oh. in. A nice reverse lay-in. Oh my! That was a circus shot. That was that was fun to watch. I didn't think there was anything he could do with the ball to go to the bucket. I thought he had to kick, but he created a shot underneath the rim. What a beautiful play. -in. Seven points now for Knight, who averages 14 and a half a game, so he's already at the halfway point. And there's a steal from Zeisloff. Well, double down out of that zone when they got the ball at the low post. Tried to dribble through it and couldn't make it. Uh, Knight's shot that time got stuck between the rim and the backboard. Which constitutes a jump ball. 
jump ball then goes to alternating possession, which is still Illinois State possession, and a shot clock reset. McKinney's coming back in now for Dewan Marrero, who played well off the bench for the Blue Demons. Great set right there out of the inbounds play to get Loft on a good look, and it was a good look. Redbirds getting good shots. Just can't get them to fall. You just have to fight through those dry spells, and that, that happens. I, mean, I don't care who you are. Kenny has fouled. It looked like Hunter got him that time. Watching a game last night at, on television, Ohio State, the number rank, number three ranked team in the nation, went seven and a half minutes without a field goal. I mean, it, it happens to everyone. It's, it's what you do during those dry spells offensively. It's, what, what do you do with the rest of your game to contribute? Are you playing solid defense? Are you rebounding? Are you running the floor? Things of that nature. You just have to overcome those dry spells with extra effort in all those other areas. And the Blue Demons have kind of shot themselves back into it, now shooting at 47%. Again, much of that is Darrell McDonald coming off the bench and knocking down those three shots, but the Redwoods still ice cold from the field, 7 of 22 for 32% here. And yet the Redbirds are still hanging around. They're only one down, 21-20. Melvin still scoreless here in this opening half. Well, he was going to shoot that no matter what. He was going to force that up, and there were three guys swarming around him. Keen works on Young, slips a pass down low to Jones, who's fouled. You could almost see that coming, Kurt, from the angle that we have. He, Keen was going, and, and, and if, if, if Jones's man came over as he did to give help defense onto Keen, then he knew he had the kick down to Jones, and Jones was ready for it and drew the foul going up. That's the way, again, I, I'm being repetitive, but it's, it's been a struggle to get points on a board for either side, but those are the kind of things you had to do to create offense. And you got to go to the free throw line and knock him down, and John Jones just did. Jones, the only player that has started every game for the Redbirds. The key hasn't been starting the game. The key has been finishing the game because of foul trouble that he's been in. Exactly. He's a first-year player. He's sat for two years. And I don't care who you are, that's difficult to come back and be in basketball mental shape as much as anything else after a two-year layoff and then be sharp. So he's still learning, still finding his way through and finding his game. This is Young. Now Garrett on the baseline. Good find by Garrett on the opposite kickout. Skip pass all the way across the top of that defense, but McKinney missed the shot. Well, the Birds hustled the ball down every time. That time the Demons got back quickly. We approach the five and a half minute mark left here in the opening half. Keen bumped and foul. See if that's on a Billy Garrett, it is. And again. This is how you get offense when you're not making field goals. You get to the, you draw fouls, you get to the free throw line. And, and the Redbirds have been, as a team, been shooting right at 70% on the season. So that, that's, a, that's an area that, that's a major positive for them. Big plus. In fact, the Redbird coaching staff credited their free throw shooting on Thursday night in a game where the Redbirds were really laboring offensively. Again, when you shoot in the 30s, you know, 30% for the game, 32% for the game, but you can win that game because you make hay at the foul line. I think at one stretch in that game in the second half, they had made 14 consecutive free throws in the second half. Good job by Casey Keene there. Two points that without drawing a foul, you, you, you know, may not have gotten. You know, free throws, we talk about them and we just assume that everybody's going to make them. Again, I go to look at the teams like North Carolina this year. So they've lost a handful of ball games this year because they're only shooting 50% at best from the free throw line. Garrett draws contact on Jones. That's his second foul. And this is sixth against the Redbirds as a team. And so Billy Garrett Jr. to the free throw line. We mentioned that he led Morgan Park to the state championship last year in high school. And he has stepped right in, inserted as a starter in the sixth game of the year. And he's averaging 13 points per game as a starter. So he's just picked up right where he left off in high school. Yeah, no doubt. 
had his jersey retired at Morgan Park. There's only been one other jersey retired there, and that's a young man by the name of Mr. Blackshirt playing down at Louisville. That's pretty good company. Yep. And he evens the game with those two free throws. And we're tied at 23. As we approach the five-minute mark left here, opening half, Kurt Pegler, Bob Morris with you, Illinois State and DePaul on Comcast Sportsnet Chicago. Hope you're enjoying this on the Sunday before Christmas. Looking at a little bit of a zone right there by the Blue Demons and the Redbirds. Zach Lofton cuts through it like hot nine foot through butter. Kazakina tacked it and drew the defense in. Redbirds had numbers off the steal. Willis all the way down with the left hand. Good run, good spurt. That's the things you got to do. Good job by the Redbirds right there. 30 seconds. 30 seconds timeout, so the Redbird D turns into Redbird offense on that last play. Well, that's, that's again, being creative. We just see it right there. That's, and that little three-quarter court, 2-2-1, two, two, if you can step, step into a passing lane, you can deflect the ball and deflections. Coaches chart those all the time. Deflection mean the ball's loose, and then it's a 50-50 chance. How aggressive are you going to be on 50-50 balls? you got to come up with them. you got to be the winner. And you saw the Redbirds were there, and it paid off on the other end. They, as you said, Kirk, they turned defense into offense because of hustle. Well, the Redbirds have settled into this zone, and we saw it work to a, a huge um, advantage in, in the game against Dayton. And you know, a lot of coaches who are man-to-man -man guys just don't like to see the zone, but the Redbirds have really done a nice job with it, haven't they? That they have, and and, and what it has done, it, it's by packing it in the way they've done, played so tight, it's taken away not only the inside post presence, it's it's re restricted the uh, the penetration abilities of the Blue Demons. Peter Rick Bosch gets that offensive rebound. He's just checked in for the Blue Demons, and he's going to get some free throws. Right there, we saw out of the... They they attacked, and they, they didn't try to set up in a half-court offense that time. They attacked out of the, the pressure that the front quarter put on, been put on by the Redbirds, and they took it right to the rim, and the defense didn't have a chance to give help. Rick Bosch, one of nine wow. Chicago land players on this DePaul roster. From St. Ignatius, here's that contact. But he played his high school basketball at St. Ignatius. His mom, Lisa, is the director of community operations for the, uh, the uh, community relations for the women's team at DePaul. So I guess it runs in the blood there, huh? Well, she'd also been a head women's coach at UIC for a number of years and then an assistant at DePaul with the women's program for a number of years. And we all know that uh, Blue Demon's women's program has been one of the finest in the nation for years. Right. She right. decided to get out of coaching and watch her son play. Coach Bruno's done a great job for years with DePaul. His, his father, by the way, used to play in Belgium, too. So I guess it was just going to be natural that basketball was going to be a part of his life. Four-point Illinois State lead. Lofton for three. Loose ball's going to go to DePaul. DePaul has gone to a zone. You know, I said at the beginning of the program that uh, Coach Oliver wants to go man-to-man. -man. That's what he hangs his hat on. They were, they were struggling out of that man-to-man. -man. They, they, the Redbirds were getting good movement and, and good penetration out of it, so he's gone to a zone. It appeared to be a 1-2-2. Two, two. I'll have to wait here again. The last two times they've, they've, they've had a little different look to it, so I want to before determine exactly what it is. Cleveland Melvin's first points of the game come with four minutes to go in the half. Again, the Redbirds have done a nice job on him. He averages 17.6 points per game as DePaul's leading scorer. It's a 2-3 zone, and they just on the first pass distorted and extended a bit. Be interesting to see if the Redbirds can attack a zone since they themselves play a zone. Lofton stepped on the baseline. And we'll step aside. We've got a timeout on the floor with Illinois State leading DePaul 27-25. 3.35 to go here in the opening half. All tightly contested contest. Both teams, as we mentioned, started shooting uh, really slowly. And pulled from the field, but things have finally started to move a little bit more in favor of the offenses here in the second half. Well, the, the first half. Getting a little bit more of a rhythm to it. You know, the... the uh, DePaul, for example,
Brandon Young and Darrell McDonald off the bench but combined are six for 10. Everybody else, though, for the Blue Demons are four for 15. They've got to have some other people step up. The Blue Demons want to continue scoring points. Right now, there's not, they're not getting much help. If it hadn't been for McDonald coming in off the bench, Blue Demons would be serious trouble. Got to get the ball in the middle against the zone. You got to attack it there. Melvin missed the three. Again, he's the leading three-point shooter for the Blue Demons. And Hunter takes it all the way down, and nobody stopped him. He took it right to the rim. That's, boy, that's bad transitional defense. If a guy can get a rebound and go coast to coast and lay it in, that's just, that's atrocious. McDonald again. Missed the shot. Offensive rebound to Paul. Flipped it up and flipped it in. Reggie Lynch came over. You can tell he's very stiff. Lynch is very stiff in his movement out there with that ankle. But he challenged the shot, and nobody else came to the board. You got four guards out there uh, for the Redbirds. And I mean, when you're small, you still got to go attack the rebound. Lynch is blocked from behind by Marrero. Marrero and McDonald have really given the Blue Demons a nice lift off the bench. Back to head. Back to head. Now, the, the, the Blue Demons have stayed in a zone a lot longer than, <laughs> than the Blue Demon staff would like to have them do. They just don't do it very often. There's it right in the middle of the zone. Oh! Right off, boys. Eisloff had a nice good look at it. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the middle of the zone is what's vulnerable when you're playing zone defense. You've got to move the ball so you can attack it into the middle and then go uh, either a shot or a pass out of that. There's Melvin's shot is missed. Loose ball. It's going to be Illinois State. Looks like a foul on the Blue Demons. I believe Zeisloff there again, the shorter guy, having position, draws the foul. Now he's going to the line, create offense, because he knew how to block out. You know, that's, that's not brain surgery, Kurt. That really isn't. It's fundamental. I mean, in fifth grade, you learn how to block out. If your coach in fifth grade is teaching you anything correctly, he's teaching you how to block out. And if you can't do that throughout your course of your career, then you probably shouldn't be playing at this level. And and right there, you saw Nick Zeidloff down there with the big guys. He's four or five inches shorter than people. He's blocking out and getting rewarded for it. Six foot four, 185 pound Nick Zeidloff going against six foot eight, 210 pound Cleveland Melvin. There's Melvin that picks up the foul. And creates frustrations. You know, little bitty fundamentals frustrate somebody that doesn't use those fundamentals. Solid first half for Zeisloff as he makes both of his free throws. Illinois State has a four-point advantage at the two-minute mark left here in this opening half. McDonald feeds Marrero. Reverse layup is in. They got it back in the middle against that pressure and then attacked off the, off the baseline cuts. Four points for Marrero. That ties a career high for the freshman from Gary, Indiana. Now Knight can't finish. Falls out of bounds. It's going to be Illinois State. Redbirds were fortunate that time that McDonald couldn't corral it. Good penetration against the zone on that, that particular possession. They didn't get rewarded with the bucket. But if you keep attacking it enough, you're going to get opportunities to score. Here's Lee. His pull-up is missed, and it's tipped up and in by Reggie Lynch. Lynch now with four points. Back to a four-point lead for the Redbirds. Young thought about the three, then gives it up to Garrett, who is fouled on the penetration. Redbird foul number 15, Nick Zeisloff, that's his first. Zeisloff picks up his first. Don't forget at the half, we'll hear from Redbird head coach Dan Muller as he exits the floor and gets, give us his thoughts on the opening 20 minutes of action here. We mentioned that Garrett's father, Billy Sr., obviously is an assistant coach on the Blue Demon staff. His grandfather was the first African-American player in the Big Ten. Played in Indiana, 1951. Great heritage in that very athletic family. Melvin's going to come back in and send Brandon Young to the bench. Garrett's second free throw is 
but he's averaging just a notch over 10 points per game again as a true freshman from Morgan Park. He's got seven here this afternoon as we approach the one minute mark left in this half. Illinois State with a two point advantage and the basketball. Birds are being patient on offense against the zone. They're trying to get a gap that they can penetrate. Knight on the penetration, and he's going to be rewarded with some foul shots, just as you said there, Bob. You can tell that the DePaul is not a predominantly a zone team. They, they don't move well out of a zone. They're more aggressive, and they're more confident in their man-to-man, -man, but they were getting in foul trouble out of that. So they've gone to a zone, which is not their comfort area, and it's it's showing right there. You're seeing penetration by the Redbirds in these gaps and breaking them down out of it, which they are, they're continuing to foul them. Young back in for DePaul, Samuel in for Illinois State. As Reggie Lynch again nursing that ankle injury goes back to the Redbird bench. Lynch is fighting through that ankle injury. You can tell it's stiff. It's not as loose as, and fluid as he normally is out there. Bird still putting that 2 2 1 3 quarter court pressure on. Blue Demons looking to move it up. And now they're going to run a little clock. Here's Young, top of the circle. Three is in. Boom. Young Boom. For three. He's just a 22% three-point shooter, but he's got a couple of those three-pointers here in the opening half. And he's got 10 points for the Blue Demons. Coach Muller shouting out instructions on what he wants done for the last shot. Blue Demons appear to have matched up and gone man. Final seconds of the half. Knight gives it up to Zizloff. His three is in. Great shot. And Nick Zizloff answers with a three of his own. Solid opening half for Zizloff. His three right before the horn has given the Illinois State Redbirds a 37-34 halftime lead over DePaul. Halftime of today's Illinois State broadcast is presented by Country Financial. Coach, scoring was a little difficult on both ends for both teams that started the game, but you guys seem to have figured some things out as a, as a half c continued. Yeah, we got it going a little bit, hit some shots. Um, our, our press has not been very good. They're scoring our press way too much. It's, we, we have to make some adjustments with that. Our half-court defense is very good, but offensively, we just got to keep moving the ball. We'll make shots. You're rebounding well, I think, out of your, your defense. We are. We are. Our guys are really boxing out, which is the key. They're much bigger and stronger than us. we got to box out and make a foul us to get aboard. Coach, good luck. Second half. Redbirds are... Redbirds... DePaul 44, Illinois State 40. And the reason for the turnaround at the beginning of the second half is the energy that DePaul Blue Demons have brought to the court. You see Marchuch on a follow-up right there and a kick out. And in, in goes Brandon Young for the little left-handed lay-in, and he draws the foul against John Jones. That's the kind of energy that Blue Demons did not show in the first half that they brought out the first two and a half minutes of the second half and have taken the lead away from the Redbirds. And you just saw a shot of Jones on the Illinois State bench because he picked up his third foul in that sequence. And it was Sandy Martucci who started the play on the defensive end with a rebound and finished it on the other end, keeping that play alive with an offensive rebound. And a three-point make now as the free throws in for Young. With him 13 points, he is the game's leading scorer and give DePaul a five-point lead, largest of the game at 45-40. Zizloff's three is missed. A little long, a little strong on that one, but a good, a good look. He was open. Shooter's got to take good shots, and that was for him. You're seeing a lot more effort on the inside players of DePaul right now to want the ball. They're demanding the ball. Hamilton. We almost lost that. that again, good effort to keep the ball in play, but well, Billy Garrett stepped through the lane and hit the floater. Billy Garrett is showing me something as a freshman. He's, he's strong, he's big, he's, he knows when to shoot, when to kick. Young man's a polished player. Tonight is stripped, and it's off of land and out of bounds, and the Blue Demons, who've scored on their last four possessions, now have the momentum. 
Hughes coaching staff wondering more than the question why that contact wasn't whistled as a foul. Had been all first half. Four to ball players in the first half had two fouls. Illinois State staying in the 2-3 zone that they started the game and played the entire first half with. There, we talked about the ability to get the ball into the middle against that zone, and you saw it happen right there. Pump fake by Garrett. He drives and can't get it. Hamilton is stripped. Ball's out of bounds, but DePaul maintains possession. Now, the, the shot that was taken did not touch the rim. It flew over the rim and off the backboard. And here we see on the last ISU possession, and that's a 50-50. There's enough contact there that some, you usually this year, you're expecting to get that call. So I understand uh, the coaching staff question. Oh, it's deflected by Zeisloff on the inbounds, and the Birds get the steal. Lofton in the front court. His three is missed. Boy, the Redbirds have gone cold. That's just how they started the first half was cold. Lofton is in there because he is a shooter. He is a scorer, and, and if they can get the offense rolling by getting Zach Lofton going, then so be it. That's what they've got to do. Some miscommunication there between Marchuch and Melvin, March and the DePaul Blue Demons turn it over. Marchuch had a bad kick out on that one. Bad, bad play on his part. Officials time out. The Blue Demons have a seven-point lead over Illinois State, 15-36 to go in this one. They just showed a shot of this guy on the Jumbotron, and he got a huge ovation. I wonder why. Yeah, that's hard to believe, isn't it? That's Jackie Carmichael, the former Redbird star player. Graduated last year, was an All-Missouri Valley Conference performer. Was playing professionally in Spain for a little while. Back in the States now, and has told us that he is uh, hoping for another professional basketball opportunity in the very near future. So best of luck to Jackie. It's good to see him back on campus. Always is, because as good a basketball player as he was, and he was a real good, he's a better human being. Graduated on time, solid citizen in the community, really first class act. Out of the timeout, 2-3 zone being implemented by DePaul. Ball's going to go out of bounds, and the Redbirds are going to maintain possession. Dan Muller trying to get his Redbirds back on track here. They've gone cold shooting here to open this second half. They have a three-point make from Harris Lee, but that's the only field goal here in the first five minutes of this second half. Well, the rebounding has gone all to Paul's way also in the second half. If my stats are accurate here, it's 13 to one in the second half rebounds to Paul over Illinois State. Might have got away with a trap right there. Lost in the night, following jumper. Boy, just cannot buy one. Hamilton tried to save, but it's off of DePaul, and so the Rivers will get the basketball back. As you've mentioned throughout the broadcast, it's not as if the Redbirds have not had good shots. They just can't knock down some of these open jumpers. And that's unusual for this, because this is a team that's noted for good, being good shooters. High degree of difficulty there for Knight as he knived through traffic there, but couldn't get that one to go. Again, thought he was going to draw a foul. That, that was the purpose behind that shot attempt. He, he thought he was going to, there's how you do it. Knight with the steal all the way down. And Sometimes you got to use your defense to jump start the offense. Well, you know, I'm going, to, I'm going to sound like Pete and repeat here, but in the first half we talked about this. When your shots aren't going down, then you have got to do something to get offense. Mark shoots on the offensive rebound, and it's a tie-up. And the possession arrow favors the Redbirds. Here's another look at that steal and land. Anticipated the cross-court bounce pass. Deshaun Knight did. Got in the lane, stole it, went the lane. Finished. Reggie Lynch's presence was felt on this last defensive possession. Got the block, called it the jump ball. Alternating possession goes to the Redbirds. Can build on that. That's a momentum changer when you block a shot and get the ball out of it. That's a bump. That's a real. Can be a change if you can score from it. Lofton's fade away from the baseline is no good. Loose ball, it's still loose. There's going to be a foul. 
like a loop. My, how's that a foul? Nobody had possession of that ball, and when and until you got possession, that thing's like a fumble. There was no possession on that. I'm, I'm a little baffled on that, and I realize it. There were two DePaul players on the floor, and only one of the ISU players there. And Lynch has picked up his third foul, so he will leave and be replaced by Jones, who has three fouls. He's got to be able to flip the page and move on. Calls go and come, and you can't do anything about it. Mental toughness. Your coaches talk about it all the time. Get past that. McKinney, Marrero, Young, Garrett, and Marchuk are the five on the floor for DePaul right now. Oh, great. Garrett slips the ball down to a cutting Young who laid it in. Young. Great play. That was all set up right there by Billy Garrett knifing into the middle of that zone and then hitting a cutter on the baseline. Great move by Billy Knight. Lee, Lofton, Zeisloff, Jones, and Keen are on the floor for the Redbirds, and that's Jones. Excuse me. Much needed basket. I said Billy Knight. That's Billy Garrett. I apologize. Great. Another nice Great. Uh, pass. And it, oh, yeah, he got happy feet. Got happy feet. That was a great pass again by Garrett. Here we see Garrett going in, knifing through the defense, and hitting Brandon Young on the cut. And now we see right here, Jones gets it, goes up, challenges the big guys. Little jump hook over the left shoulder. He needs to do more of that. Keep it simple. One dribble, go up. Don't complicate things. The game is a lot easier if you keep it simple. Keen finds an open loft and he nails the three. Much needed. Much needed. Great kick out by Keza Keen. The crowd gets into it. And a very good timeout by Coach Oliver Panet. Get this crowd calmed down a little bit. What once was a seven-point DePaul lead is now just down to two. The Redbirds have rattled off three baskets in a row. Well, they're getting more penetration again. And that's what, when they were successful in the first half, that's what they were able to do to the DePaul defense. That in the first three to five minutes in the, in the second half, DePaul didn't allow penetration. Now they're starting to, the Redbirds are starting to get back into the paint and kicking out. Billy Garrett try to exert himself on the DePaul side, and Harris Lee and maybe Deshaun Knight try to do that on the Illinois State side. Yep, exactly. And, and it's now it's who's going to be able to impose their will on the other squad without fouling and create scoring opportunities for their teammates. Because if you get selfish and you try to impose your will and then score, then you're, you're going against. You know, you're, you're swimming upstream then. you gotta, you got to create for your teammates. There's Young. Boy, Young. That was a good play. Step out in the short corner for the, with the big man and hit a cutter from the top coming down. Blue Demons with a nice job of spacing the floor there. 17 points now for Young, the game's leading scorer. He's two points over his season average already. Blue Demons have gone back to their man-to-man -man defense. Again, lofted for three, oh. in and out. DePaul is much more determined on their offensive sets in the second half than they were in the first half. They were just kind of going through motions in the first half. They didn't have a lot of purpose to what they were doing. They're setting solid screens now, creating for each other. Hamilton to miss. Offensive rebound. That's missed as well. It was Marrero. Timeout on the floor. Illinois State trails to fall. 51-47 with 11-27 to play. Good. It will be a white Christmas in central Illinois. Got a fresh coating of snow yesterday. 
But inside Redbird Arena, people just talking about college basketball. First meeting between DePaul and Illinois State in 17 years, and the Blue Demons have a 51-47 lead over the Redbirds with 11.27 to go. Kurt Pegler, Bob Morris, our Niles Media Group sports team with you. Happy holidays and Merry Christmas to you. We're glad that you're alongside here on Comcast Sportsnet Chicago. Kurt, we got an early Christmas present at my house. I had my first granddaughter you born did. Wednesday morning. Congratulations. Hattie Heisler. Is a born to my daughter and her, her husband. And everyone's healthy and That's good to hear. And I, I'm going to guess if her grandfather has anything to say, she's going to have a golf club in one hand and a basketball in the other. You better believe it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're just pleased that everyone's on, Charles, Charles, healthy. Come on, come on, Charles. Come on Charles. Tony come on, Will's Charles. shot there was blocked out of bounds, so the Redbirds have it. This is Lofton. Nice pass yeah. down to Jones. Again, the, the dribble penetration attracted defense, defensive attention. That left Jones wide open. Great pass by Lofton. Jones needs that. He needs to build his confidence to get an easy flush down like that and get him going. In a two-point lead. Redbirds have not come out of the zone all day. McDonald floater missed. Loose ball corralled by Jones, but he's tied up. It was Marrero who got his hand in there, and so on the held possession, it's going to go to DePaul. Good job by Jones. Let's, well, all right, let's go back here in a replay. We see the attraction of the defenders to, to Lofton right there, that nobody rotated in front of Jones. Great recognition by Lofton and the dunk. A very high percentage shot, if you didn't know that. Though. Yes. Especially when there's nobody around you. That's <laughs> an even higher percentage. Yes. Billy Garrett Jr.'s three. No good. Kaza Keen trying to crash the boards. It's going to be and he does. Illinois State great basketball. Great job. Great, great job on defense right there. Again, one of the keys we talked about was challenging the three-point shooting oh, abilities oh, of the Blue Demons and then crashing the boards with four people. Right there was an example of why the Redbirds are doing that. Not necessarily prolific shooters from the outside. the halfway mark of this second half. Knight is bumped and fouled at the perimeter by Charles McKinney. DePaul is not a particularly good open court, one-on-one, -on -one, guard the ball kind of a team. They, 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 get, they like to extend their pressure and push you out, but then once you get the ball in a one-on-one -on -one scenario, they, they, they reach a lot. They don't move their feet, they reach, and they're in foul trouble. They were, they, like I said, they had four players with two fouls in the first half. Look at that sack. Keen to Jones again. Missed it. Got his own rebound. Put it back up. Missed that one, too. Oh, goodness. Got to dunk it. Got to dunk it. Just take it up and dunk it. He short-armed both of them. Left it. Left it under the rim both times. Short-armed. It didn't follow through. Got to just go up two hands and break the backboard. momentum changer. McKinney looks inside. It's Hamilton spinning on Jones and contact and a foul. That'll be the fourth foul on John Jones. If it's on Jones. I'm not sure if it's Jones or Wills. You're right. Wills on the reach in. Jones appeared to be walled up, hands up, straight up, and they got Wills, Tony Wills on the reach. Tommy Hamilton, the fourth, all six foot ten, 285 pounds of them. The freshman, who is leading all Big East freshmen in scoring and rebounding at this point. Of course, his father, Thomas Hamilton, played a couple of years in the NBA with the Celtics and with Houston. He won state championships with Chicago Kings, Sonny Cox's teams back in the 90s. Back in the day, everybody remembers those. The King, the King Show. Sonny Cox, come to town, you would know it. He's given his team a four-point advantage. Wills down the lane. Lost it. But it's Knight who comes up with it. Still got 20 seconds on the clock. No reason for panic. 
He has his shot blocked, but got it back and flipped it up and couldn't get it. It's Jones with the offensive board, and he's going to get to the free throw line. Boy's having trouble finishing in there. The big fella's mixing it up. That's a positive, but he's got to finish. He just got to get production out of that position. That's his third. See, drawing fouls is one thing. Drawing fouls while you score is the exclamation point that you're looking for. has been active, but again, we mentioned that really all season long, the one thing that he's really had to fight is foul trouble. He's playing with three fouls now. Could have been whistled for a fourth just a moment ago, but again, that foul went to Wills. So he cashes in at the free throw line, and it's back to a two-point game. And the Redbirds utilize the 2-2-1, two -two three-quarter court, a little pressure. Garrett splits it and finds the cutter. It's Hamilton. When they get the ball to the middle to Billy Garrett, positive things have happened against that pressure from the Redbirds. They're scoring almost at will when he gets it because he knows how to attack the rim and either finish with a shot or find a player, find Will's a teammate. Floater is in. That was playing to his left-handed strength. He can knife through a defense rather easily with that left-handed release right there. Got a promising future as a freshman. There's Garrett again in the middle. A little, little teardrop didn't go for him. And now again, the Redbirds with an opportunity to tie or take the lead. Lofton shot is rejected, swatted out of there by Cleveland Melvin, who has now moved into sixth place all time in the DePaul block shot list. He has just Redbird broken Redbird. a tie that he had with David Booth, the former DePaul star who is from nearby Peoria. Keen's going to give it up. Knight for the lead. That's in. A three. Boy, that's been hard fought for the Redbirds to stay close enough to get this opportunity, but their, their patience on offense and their tenacity on defense has kept them around, and a shot like that means a lot then when you take the lead. Jones on the overplay tipped that ball out of bounds. Redbird energy fans giving some energy now to the bird. Energy momentum. Energy is creating momentum. Tenth straight double-digit point effort for night, and the Redbirds lead Demons 56-55 with 7.54 to go. Former Illinois State player Brett Gillen, part of the band Rushville, which is entertaining the crowd here at Redbird Arena this afternoon, and his Illinois State Redbirds have now carved a one-point lead, 56-55, the Redbirds' first lead since the 18.03 mark of the second half. Energy has created momentum for both sides. DePaul came out in the, in the, at the beginning of the second half with all the energy, and they took the lead. Then they kind of hit a lull. ISU flexed their energy, and now they've taken the lead. And, and it's, it's all about how hard you play. You know, and again, that doesn't require a 40-inch vertical jump. That's just effort, heart, passion for the game. Get after it. That's what you signed up for. Now go do it. Young is bumped on his penetration before the bucket. Hand check in the hip. Wills likely. It is. His second foul. Sixth against the Redbirds as a team. Fresh 35 now for DePaul on the shot clock. Boy, Wills knocked it yes. off of Garrett, who is still standing out of bounds. It went off of Garrett. Redbird basketball. That was crazy. <laughs> We've actually seen a couple of times where the Redbirds have deflected the inbounds pass yep. underneath the basket. Yeah. And that, that's that's a scouting report accomplishment right there. When you've scouted them enough that you know what their inbounds plays and you can you can get a hand on it and get a deflection out of something like that, that's a scouting report accomplishment. And Garrett and Keene bump there, and the foul's going to go against the DePaul freshman. For Illinois State, the scout coach on this game was Coach Tory Ward, assistant Tory Ward. He did a great job to be able to get the inbound plays to the point where we can get where the Redbirds can get deflections of that nature. Casey Keene is playing one of his more solid games, Kurt. 
he'd been struggling in the first part of the season with some turnovers and decision making and things of that nature. He seems to be more confident out there and playing with innings abilities right now. Kind of a quiet, steady game for him. That's into the basketball. He leaves it for Knight. Nope. No good. The ball's no. loose and DePaul comes down with it. It's Young. Spins. That's going he was nowhere. looking for contact. He couldn't get it. Wills ahead to Lofton, who touches it ahead to Deshaun Knight. Nicely done. Great knowledge of where your teammate is. Great understanding. Stay in the floor defensively. Ball's in the middle of the court. Cleveland Melvin, the spin, he can't get it. Loose ball is corralled by Reggie Lynch. Reggie Lynch challenged the shot attempt without the foul that time. Three players from Baltimore on the floor right now. Young and Melvin for DePaul and Deshaun Knight for the Redbirds. Do you think maybe when Coach Purnell was at Clemson, he established some relationships in the, in the Baltimore area? I would say so. Ball is out of bounds with the Redbirds have maintained possession. Harris Lee and Bobby Hudson will come back in for Illinois State. And Kay Zakeen will go to the bench. Depth at the guard position this year for Illinois State. They like to, they, they're showing that three-quarter court pressure the whole game. They're going to some up-tempo offense. And you got to have depth at your guard position there. Great in, great pass into the middle. Reggie never got his, he got the ball, caught it, but he never got squared to the bucket. He threw it over the shoulder rather than squaring up. That's a freshman error. Got to learn to do that. McDonald for three. Boy, he has been a lifesaver for them today. They would be in trouble offensively if he hadn't, if he had missed the bus coming down for this game. A 10-point effort for Darrell McDonald, whose career high is 12. DePaul's gone back to their 2-3 zone. I guarantee you that is not the defense that Coach Purnell likes prefer to preferably play because they just they're man he's all about man to man oh mcdonald again offensive foul this time out of control he wanted to make something happen he felt it he's trying to do too much Somebody like Paul. Zeisloff's three from the corner is no good. Tip out of bounds. It's off of Cleveland Melvin. And so the Redbirds will maintain possession. Well, at one point in the second half, DePaul had a seven-point lead, and the game was teetering on getting out of hand for the Redbirds, but Illinois State has fought back. They have eight ties and five lead changes, and we're even with five minutes to go in this one. Lofton penetrates, draws contact, and he's going to get to the free throw line. He's done a good job of that today. He's found that crease in that zone. Every time DePaul has gone to the zone, and, and Lofton has been able to penetrate, create, contact and end up with three throw Here we see it on the replay. Coming right down, a reach, a bump, a slap, a hack. There was about four people that made contact on him with that. We've we, we talked about this throughout the game. All right, so your jump shot's not rolling in for you today. There'll be days it does, and you'll light it up, and everything comes easy, and it's, it's you know, it's, it's happy, happy land for you then. Now, what do you do on the days that don't? You gotta go create some offense. You gotta be, you gotta impose your will on your opponent. Zach Lofton opened the season with seven straight double-figure sca uh, scoring games, but only had one in his last four. So he hit a little bit of a scoring drop, but he's got 10, so he's back in double figures now after his 10th point has given the Redbirds a 60-58 advantage. Good overplay by Jones and the steal, and now the Redbirds back in the front court. And Lee is smart to bring the ball back out. Near steal that time by Young, and a foul on Young. Gambled. Gambled. He almost had it. I would be a little happier if Nick Zeisloff would.
would step to that ball and meet it rather than wait for it to come to him. Again, you see, what, what, what DePaul wants to do is extend their defense. They want to gamble like that and come out on the floor so they can get the easy basket on the other end on the on the steals and turnovers. If they not getting them, then they're giving up free throws. They're giving up penetrations to the bucket. Zeisloff had four free throw attempts coming into this game, Bob, and he's already four out of four here, so he's already equaled his total number of free throws for the season here this afternoon. He's been active. When you're active, good things happen. That's his 10th point. Eyes lost with a chance to give the Redbird a four-point lead. 62-58 now. Young thought about the three steps inside the arc. Headed blocked. Good hands by Hunter. Phyllis, the ball came loose on the the deflection by Hunter. Now it's Melvin from the corner. That's no good. Tip out, and it's going to be a foul against the Blue Demons. Contact there with Hamilton and Hunter. I believe it was Lofton under the bucket. The foul came against Hamilton, against Lofton. Lofton had inside position, which is where he's supposed to be when the ball's in the opposite corner. Hamilton attempted to come over top. And again, creating offense oh, out of his defensive now. position. And now the Redbirds are going to be sitting in the double bonus here, Bob. So free throw shooting is going to be real critical for the Redbirds in the final four minutes. And the officials well, are going to take a look at the monitor here. I think, you know, I, the only thing I can think of that be over there looking at it is was there a, 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 a blow to the head in, in that exchange that... I don't think initially there was, but then when they went after the ball, there was a scurry after the ball towards the De DePaul bench that I think they're, they're just maybe taking a look at that to see if there was a cheap shot. Of, I didn't see anything hurt. I don't know. And well, they could be trying to identify who the foul is on. I mean, there's yes. really only a couple of things that they could be looking at. But we'll reset this for you now. Illinois State has a 62-58 lead over DePaul. Now, we'll, we'll see if we can't right, here we go. give a look here. There's the shot. So, opposite side. See, there's the foul. Oh, there's the push in the back. There's the foul. Okay, now, from this point forward, what happens on the tubes going afterward, after the ball? Was there anything? Oh, we just, as it went out of our screen, there was an arm... I saw a head flop pass, uh, you know, just out of the picture. Maybe we got a different angle that we can take a look at it and see. You see the official thing there. Here we go. Let's now watch this right here. Oh, the contact between Hamilton and Hunter. Yeah, it was Now they got to see, you know, to me, that's two guys going after the basketball. That, you know, that's just part of the game. And evidently, the officials have deemed it as just incidental contact, so the foul initially was on uh, Hamilton underneath the basket on Lofton. So Lofton's going to shoot free throws, yeah. and that'll be the extent of the foul. And I understand the officials have to go look at that anytime there's something that happens in the head area. They have to take a look at it. They're required to by, their, by the people that grade them. So when they do, don't be upset. They're trying to clean the game up and make it a better game. Sometimes things like that just happen. Lofton now with 12 points. He's given the Redbirds their largest lead of the game at 64 to 58. Again, I think the Redbirds are just they're out hustling. They're doing all the little things. You know, you got Zach Lofton at 6'4", having rebound position, drawing a foul on, on Hamilton at 6'8". McDonald nearly lost it, and it's Jones that comes away with a steal. That's two turnovers the last two times McDonald has touched the ball. Jones is contact from behind, but no call. 
Good patience. Reload it, reset it. Good job by the Redbird. Lofton behind a screen from Zeislaw as Dan Muller barks out a play. Now Lofton penetrates, and he's going to go right back to the free throw line. But, you know, and again, they, DePaul does a poor job of guarding on the ball. 64-58, Illinois State with a lead. Time now to select the Bratcher Heating and Air Defensive Player of the Game. And that's going to go to number 10, John Jones, in the middle for Illinois State. He's had his hands in the mix here, especially in the second half, played for some pretty good D, Bob. I, I couldn't agree with you more. I, you know, in the first half, it was kind of, I don't know who I'm going to give this to, but as the second half has played out, we've seen a lot more energy and intelligence on the defensive end by John Jones. He stepped over the top. He's got three steals all in the second half. He's got two other deflections. He's got three blocks. And like you said, he's got four or five rebounds. He's been a factor in everything that, th that has taken place out there. And when ISU has made their run, that's when he's flexed his muscle and been been apart. Today's defensive player of the game brought to you by Bratcher Heating and Air, making home comfortable again. Learn more on ways to defend your home against the elements by visiting BratcherComfort.com. Lofton continues to make pay at the foul line. Hunter's head. 
created that. But anyway, it is what it is. Marcic is a 56% free throw shooter, the native of Croatia. Transferred from Purdue. Missed it. Long rebound. Lawson. Or Deshaun Knight. The foul's going to be on Deshaun Knight, evidently. Well, that's, that's interesting. Deshaun Knight gets that. Wow. That's his second team night. So the foul is on Knight. It's that's, on the floor. That's amazing. Back to the free throw line for the Blue Demons. One and one. And this time it's going to be Greg Sakile. That's, in, that, that's an inconsistent call for what's been happening throughout the game. And that's going to roll in. And, and the reason I say that is the inside person has gotten the call all day because they've had position. When you're on the inside and the person coming up over top has been the one whistled for the foul. That's why the dislike of the call by the coaching staff from Illinois State. It's been an, it was an inconsistent call with what's happened the rest of the game. That one won't roll in. So he splits the free throws. It's a one possession game. 66-64, Illinois State the lead and the basketball. Big possession right here for obviously I'm stating the obvious. Captain obvious on that count. But you gotta be able to score because you can't run the clock out. So you gotta set up people that you wanna have the ball. And lo and behold, it's in Zach Lawkins' hand, but a timeout by Coach Muller, he didn't like what he saw. 30 seconds. 30-second timeout. Now, if you're Dan Muller, what kind of a play are you calling here? We saw a clear out for Zach Lofton in a similar situation. Well, the one thing that Lofton has been able to do today is get to the rim. His penetration has allowed him opportunities. Now, what you can do out of it is set up an opportunity where you clear a side, but you got shooters spotted up, and, as long, and that's what they're diagramming right now, is something that whoever gets the penetration, you can get him penetration by a high ball screen, you can get him in a solo situation where he goes one one-on-one, -on -one, and, and then he, he's got to know what his other options are because you could not, got to believe help side defense is going to come over and cut him off. Now who do you kick to and where are they going to be at? I'll also be curious if DePaul switches out of their man and goes zone. They've done that periodically today. Lofton, Jones, Zeisloff, Knight, and Lee are the five on the floor for Illinois State for this possession. DePaul stays in their in their man-to-man. -man. That's their bread and butter. And then on the first pass, they went zone. They're in a 2-3. Four on the shot clock. Lofton, catch and shoot. And three is missed. Tipped out by Zeisloff. Zeisloff with a huge, huge tip out. Little things. Little things. I talked about it earlier. The grunt part of the game. Up to this point, I don't know how this game is going to finish, but up to this point, Illinois State has done the little things better than DePaul has. The blockouts, the 50-50 possessions, the tip-outs when needed. Knight tried to penetrate and tried to hit a bounce pass to Zeisloff, but it was Young who got his hand in there. A smart play from Zeisloff here. We see the, the shot as the shot clock is running down, comes out in front of the rim. Again, a 6 4 Six four player gets his hands on it for tip. The Redbirds had a hard time getting the ball in bounds, so they call timeout. And so fans will remind you that the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Championship is coming to St. Louis. Experience it live and catch second and third round March Madness action on March the 21st and the 23rd at Scott Trade Center, hosted by the Missouri Valley Conference. All session tickets start at 198 bucks. Visit NCAA.com slash men's basketball tickets to make a date with champions. 42.8 seconds to go. The Redbirds have the lead and the basketball. One of the things that I believe is a uh, strength of Coach Muller is inbound plays underneath his own basket. He has a knack of being able to find shooters in open situations if the play goes as he diagrams it. Now, they don't have to rush in there. There's still 12 on the clock, but if you get an open look and you're a shooter, you got to be able to not be afraid to take it. you got to want it. Lee gets it into Jones, and it's intercepted. Jones did not squeeze the ball. He, did, he caught it for, fragile. So McKinney comes away with a steal, and now it's DePaul with the ball. 
and a timeout by Oliver Purnell. When Jones gets that ball like that in this scenario, I mean, everything has got to be done with strength. you got to want it. you got to be able to carry it and be strong with the ball. Hey, Valley fans, to finish here, the Redbirds clinging to a two-point lead. However, it's DePaul with the basketball. Now, if you're the Blue Demons, are you trying to get the three-point shot here, or are you going for the tie? You're taking the first good open look you can get. And if it's a shooter that's open at a three, then yeah, you're going to take that. If you can kick it down inside, you're going to do that too, but or penetrate. But they're not going to be. They got 30 seconds on the shot clock, so they can they they can milk it and get down to where there's not much time if they want. I think they're going to have a shot attempt. But the first open good look, they're going to take it, no matter where it's at. And and you got to believe that. Uh, uh, Billy Garrett's going to have his hand on the ball to create. Whether it's create for himself, create for a teammate, you, you, it, it's that that remains to be seen. But Billy Garrett's going to determine what happens. McKinney, Young, Garrett, Hamilton, and Forrest Robinson are the five on the floor for DePaul. Harris Lee, Bobby Hunter, John Jones, Nick Zeisloff, Deshaun Knight, the five for Illinois State. 30 seconds left. The important thing for Illinois State is no putbacks. You've got to secure a defensive rebound. It's Garrett tie up. Illinois State, State, Illinois ball. State. What a great defense. What great, great defense. It takes guts to reach in and grab leather. And the referee had a perfect angle and had a right. We see it right there. We see it right there. He reached in and got all ball. That's one Chicago kid, Paris Lee, taking it away from another Chicago kid, Billy Garrett. And now, with 18 seconds to go, it's Illinois State basketball. But again, DePaul calls timeout. Well, obviously, they're going to have to apply pressure. They don't have the luxury of let, you know, you know, letting the clock go down or anything of that nature. They've got a foul right away. That fourth game on the broadcast schedule. We hope that you're along for all of those, and we're glad that you're with us here this afternoon in what has been a very entertaining game down to the final 18 seconds. Well, I believe you and I called this. We said this is going to be one of those grunt and grind games. It's going to go down to the end, and lo and behold, it has. Got to be strong with the basketball. Strong with the basketball. Knight is fouled in the backcourt. The foul is going to go against Sakile. And so it's going to be Deshaun Knight to the foul line. Double bonus. The Redbirds are in the double bonus, so he's going to get a pair of them. The Redbirds essentially won Thursday night's game at home against Tennessee State at the free throw line because the Redbirds just did not shoot the ball well from the floor. And it's kind of been the same situation here this afternoon. Right now, the Redbirds at 31% from the field. Oh, my. Now, make this one. It's still a three-point ball game. And Illinois State at least is guaranteed a tie. DePaul was given a breath right there. They're given some life, I should say, because a three-point shot would would tie the game and send it to overtime. Again, the most important thing is a defensive rebound. No matter what kind of shot DePaul takes. Three-point Illinois State lead and timeout Oliver Purnell. Well, they're not left with much option. They, we know the shot attempt, the initial shot attempt is going to come from behind the, behind the line in an attempt to send this game into overtime. Now, Cleveland Melvin is DePaul's best three-point threat. He shoots it at 51% coming into the game. He has not had a typical Cleveland Melvin game, and I think you've got to tip your hat to the Illinois State defense because they've made things very difficult on him. He has only attempted one three-pointer here today. He's been held to just four points. Young is two out of four from beyond the arc. And, of course, we mentioned that probably a guy you know is going to have his hands on the basketball, that's Billy Garrett Jr. Oh, there's, yeah. I, I, I'd be shocked if Billy Garrett Jr. isn't determining the outcome of this game one way or the other, whether it's off a pass, penetrate, kick, whatever. Billy Garrett is going to touch the basketball. Well, those three are going to be the guys that you would figure would be in the mix here. Well, Although Melvin doesn't even come out on the floor, no. so it will not be Cleveland Melvin. Wow. 
kind of amazing to me as a senior. Redbird fans on their feet now for the final 11.4 seconds. Brandon Young is going to have a lot to do with it also, too. He's, he's jacking it. Young for three, and the tie is no good, and it's Hunter who comes down with it. That, you call the timeouts, or a guy could take three dribbles and jack it up for 25 feet on shot. That, that really surprises me there. Now, Redbirds did what they needed to do. They contested the shot and then flew in and got the rebound, drawing the foul. Two, three, Redbirds, four, this has not been a game that's been easy for either team. Offense has been difficult today. Offense has been difficult. So you've got to find you've got to find a way. And, and Redbirds have done that. Redbirds did not get blown out by the post players. They were overmatched on the inside with, by size. They challenged the three-point shooters and from DePaul, and they did not respond. The Redbirds waited 17 years to get another crack at DePaul. Beat them in St. Louis back in 1996 in their last meeting between the two schools. And beat them this afternoon, 69-64, Illinois State, a five-point winner over DePaul. Time now to select the Meyer player of the game. And that is... energy today and his abilities to take the ball to the basket he gave him 14 points he missed one free throw he's seven of eight he had five assists he turned the game around i think zach lofton is the meyer player of the game brought to you by meyer top brands at low prices shop and save at meyer.com illinois state 69 and DePaul 64 and head coach Dan Muller, kind enough to come over courtside here and try to give us a couple of post-game thoughts before he goes off with his team. Coach, again, a, a kind of rough sledding as far as your shooting percentage from the field, but when you can shoot 31% on your home floor and win a basketball game, you got to feel good about it. I sure do against a very good team, a physical team. Well, we gave up a bunch of offensive rebounds at the beginning of the second half, but other than that, I thought we really competed on the boards. You know, it comes down to making big shots down the stretch. They made a couple big plays. Cut a lead from 8-2. to two. We came back and made some big plays, and uh, this is a heck of a way to go into Christmas. They, they came out, DePaul did, with a lot of energy the first four to five minutes of that second half, and I thought you guys responded well. We you did. did. You didn't go in a, and run and hide. Yeah, we did. I called the timeout. They had, four, they had four offensive rebounds in the first half. They got five in those first two and a half minutes, and it cost us baskets. Uh, we missed some very good shots down here, so our offense was fine all night. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's about staying in the moment and continuing to play no matter what happens. That's exactly right. And your kids have done that. They've grown up to do, to that, do that because we didn't start the season seeing that, did we? Yeah, we, we certainly have grown a lot, and now the key is to do it every game. We didn't do it a few games ago. Um, last game, we were a little sluggish, but we kept playing. We have to do it every game. Now the conference is starting. Every game is going to be a tough physical battle, and we just got to keep playing every game. Congratulations. Go celebrate with your team. Okay, thank you, guys. Very good job, Coach. Yeah, Dan Muller giving his Redbird fans an early Christmas present as the Redbirds beat the DePaul Blue Demons tonight, 69-64. to For my broadcast partner, Bob Morris, and our entire Niles Media Group sports team here at Redbird, Arena, Illinois State 69 and DePaul 64. This is Kurt Pegler. Have a great night and happy holidays.